I'll never forget the words when someone said, just hold on, just keep holding on. You, you, you've got it. Just keep holding on. And there I was, uh, with my arms extended over this chairlift, holding on to an eight-year-old who was a hundred pounds. And she was holding on to my hands for dear life. See, she had fallen off of the chairlift. We all fell off of the chairlift, but, uh, my son and I were able to get ourselves back up, but she couldn't. And so I tried, but I couldn't get her up either. And so after we had gone a little bit, um, as the chair was going along, it was a high speed quad. You go past the cement block. I said, after the cement block, you're going to have to let go. And, uh, and she let go, but her hand got stuck. And suddenly I realized I had to act quick. I threw my poles and my bag off the chairlift and I reached over and I grabbed onto her and I said, I've got you. At the same time, I'm yelling back behind and saying, hey, uh, stop the chairlift. Um, and they didn't stop the chairlift until the third pole. Well, the good story is that we reacted quick enough. We had these really good conversations because I had my son and this girl, Kira, and she said that I could say her name um, right there. And the three of us had to get through one of the hardest challenges of our life and address all the really hard questions. Like what happens if I fall, am I going to die? And how do you know that you're going to be able to keep holding on to me? And what if we all fall off in the chairlift or what if the chairlift breaks? Or what if there were so many questions that we had to face right there in the moment? And honestly, um, I'm glad I learned so much about facing fears and just having conversations. And I realized that is what I've been about my entire career. I've been helping so many businesses and clients and people overcome their fears and their frustrations and what they want to do and how they want to achieve their goals or just live and survive. And so, you know, in one sense, that seems like that would have been an easy situation, but it wasn't. But what I did do is I used my own mindset of saying, we've got to do this. There's no other way we're going to do it. We're going to get through as well as some techniques that I learned through like a cycling spinning class, which was called intermittent uh, uh, cycling. And so you would cycle hard with one leg and then cycle hard with the other leg. So I use that same technique with my hands. I'd hold on, we'd hold on tight with one hand, not let go with the other one, but give it a rest and then switch. And that's how we survive those, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of her dangling there. And then when they spread out this tarp down below, we had to let go. That was the hardest part. We had to let go. I let go and she fell straight down onto that tarp. It softened her fall and she ended up being okay. She was able to stand up, walk away. Of course, it was scary. Her parents were there and everything. And at first, everyone was kind of mad at me. We didn't, they didn't know what happened. And so I, as a coach, made it really clear. I wasn't coaching her at the time, but I made it really clear about what happened. I specified everything out in email. So it was very clear to everyone. And I just wanted it to be really consistent. I felt it was really important for me as a coach and for her situation moving forward. And I'm so glad I did it that way. And of course I recovered, I pulled some muscles off my shoulder, but um, it is realizing what situations you have in the moment and how you can keep moving forward. And that is what trauma is. Trauma is things have happened and we have to keep moving forward. We have to find different ways. So that was 2016, 2017 in the summer or right before school was out, I was in a car accident and hit by a drunk driver who actually was a cop. So um, anyways, that was another story. And then uh, about six months later, I was hit in another car accident. I was just dropped my parents off at the airport and I was hit by a driver going 60 and we were getting onto the freeway, but I was at a complete dead standstill. And I hit my head on the steering wheel, which is one of the worst places you can hit your head. And uh, so I had to go to the ER by ambulance and um, I had some complications from that. We didn't think it was that bad in the beginning. Um, but then later on, we started realizing that I was having some speech 
uh, issues and some memory issues. And so we started to see doctors regarding that. And um, physically, I, I seemed to be fine. I was reacting fine and everything was good. So I did go ahead and go back to my ski coaching career because that was that's my main um, my one of my main careers in the winter. And so I went back to ski coaching and everything was fine. Well, a uh, little ways later on March, um, I think it was 15th, I got hit by a skier and I was going forward on just a little trail, taking about 30 kids to a race and at a uh, multiple ski bowl and someone came flying and they hit me head on. I jumped to the left real quick because someone was walking their dog to the right. The other guy jumped. So I ended up kind of like putting my ski between his two skis and did a slow motion fall to the side. I broke my tibial plateau in three places and shattered my shin. I ended up having surgery on my right leg and um, everything was going fine. Physical therapy was going well. And then my physical therapist discovered that I had an infection and I needed to get to the hospital immediately. By Sunday night, I my um, fever had spiked. So Monday morning, they did an emergency uh, surgery and... Um, I had quite the experience. I had sepsis and my body began to shut down and I was pretty much in a uh, induced coma uh, for about four days. I had to uh, learn how to read, you know, relearn how to walk and talk. Um, and I had a lot of situ uh, hard situations to get through. Um, I remember waking up and realizing all I needed to do was send my, my leg love and my body love, and I really needed to love myself because I realized that if I'm not loving myself, I'm not going to be here. And so I had an incredible journey um, over the next three weeks of being in the hospital and having six more surgeries to get rid of the infection and save my leg. And I learned so much about perseverance, determination, self-love, and uh, just really committing to the journey of healing and what it means to go through trauma. And it's hard. It's hard to talk about. It's hard to communicate. But that's the most important part of healing is that you have some support. You have doctors that are listening to you. Um, you have a family that is supportive and um, caring for you because um, it's not always easy. You go through transitions where something might be a little bit easier. Something's a little harder. After I finally got, up, got out of the hospital, we realized that my brain injury was more started doing more therapy for that and found out through multiple tests and um, scans that some of my brain injury is permanent and it has caused a, um, a difficult diagnosis um, that affects my um, speech and um, my ability to like problem solve in an executive functioning skills in ways that used to be really easy for me are now more difficult. And so in business, I've had to relearn how to do different things. I have to make lists. I have to check off things. I have to go back and check. I need to have help. Um, I've, if I have a programmer that's doing back end stuff for me, that's great. Um, I, and anyways, coaching, I've learned to ask for help and have assistance um, in soccer and ski racing. And so that works really well. And I'm also still really good at certain things and certain um, seeing the big picture and the small details and also putting together like databases and again, checklists and keeping us organized. I'm all really good at that. It's just like when I'm on the computer and I go to search for something, I get lost. And so um so it really affected my career. And speaking, I say things, I say the wrong words. Um, sometimes people maybe laugh at it or, you know, uh, make a joke about it. And there's a point where it's good. And there's a point where that gets tough. And so anyways, I just want to come in here and share with you. I am all about helping people move forward, regardless what's holding them back, even if they can't find the right words to say. I want to have those conversations. I want us to continue our conversations so we don't give up and we keep going. Just the other day, I was on a hike in the woods and I came across the kind of icy, snowy patch. And initially, this is the new brain, uh, says, stop, don't go any farther. And then as I started turning around, I realized, wait a minute, 
Like I can, I can go if I just adjust and do some slightly different things and walk slightly different ways. And so that's what I'm here all about. I mean, I'm here for you and I understand uh, everyone's trauma is different. We all handle things differently. We all have to move forward differently. But the more that we can talk about it and keep moving forward and just saying, we've got this, we can do it. We're not going to let go. We're here together. We're better together. That's what I'm all about. So keep asking questions, keep talking.